Good morning. Lydia Knox, artist, astrologer, and witch, coming to you live on Instagram around 9 a.m. in the morning and also uh, recording on YouTube. And I post it up later. Hi, Andre. Good to see you. All right. Let's get going on the astrology, right? So, yeah, Mercury's still in retrograde. That's old news right now. <laughs> But, uh, and you probably noticed, you know, problems with communication, problems with coordination, uh, problems with misunderstandings. And uh, so it's best to take your time, any documents, reread them, double check them, make sure that you're not jumping into conclusions. Good morning, Shay. And, and kind of, you know, go with the flow as best as you can. Keep your sense of humor intact because that'll help you out. So there's a few things that I wanted to talk about that are new in the astrology uh, realm. Uh, first one is Uranus has been going retrograde in Taurus for quite a while and now it goes direct for the next seven years in Taurus. And uh, the last time Uranus was in Taurus, uh, that was uh, during the uh, women's emancipation movement, uh, feminism, there's like uprisings, there's a change in the way we saw the world as a whole. Uh, Taurus is an earth sign, so it, it also governs money and it also governs art for you guys who are artists. So this is something to keep in mind. Um, try to be aware of the innovations in the art world that are going on and with currency in terms of uh, how it's changing and uh, it's not going to be stable the currency situation isn't going to be stable until Uranus moves into Gemini so for now it's like the wild west pretty much in terms of money but uh, I, I just read that Canada is having its own uh, digital currency it's considering making its own digital currency and some other countries have jumped on that so the way we, we spend money is going to look very different. The days of cash and coin might be going out the window over the next seven years. So try to keep that in mind in terms of investments, in terms of trying to make some money, in terms of how you're going to save money. And that, that also governs the real estate market because uh, real estate... Yeah, Shay says for the next seven years, the currency isn't stable. No, because we're going through this dramatic shift from uh, one type of currency to another. And this has been slowly accumulating with the development of uh, banks becoming digital, right? With using your bank card or your credit card instead of using the money in your wallet. And, uh, and with the pandemic, people are less likely to use uh, actual cash and more likely to use um, their bank card because there's less chance of, you know, touching a surface that's, that's germy. <laughs> so it's something to think about while uh, we go through this. And same with the economy and same with real estate and stuff like that. Uh, that is going through this giant overhaul and things are not stable. No matter how much you'd like to think that they are, they can change. So the best thing to do in these times is to remain open to innovations because that's a positive energy of Uranus and Taurus and to kind of slowly work your way through. It's like a slow transit. So nothing huge is going to happen overnight. But there's going to be little earthquakes, as Tori Amos would sing about. <laughs> I'm going to have that song stuck in my head. Going on uh, over time. So, hey, still crazy. Nice to see you here. So, yeah. So, just uh, as an artist, right? Think of how you can in innovate your art. Like, maybe pick up some pop art. Or look into pop art. Or look into NFTs. Or look at look into uh, creating digital art, or even with your subject matter. Maybe you want to uh, poke the bear a little bit with uh, what you're doing. What I'm doing in these times is that I am coming out of the broom closet as a witch, 
which is a dramatic feminist stance, really, when you think about it, as an astrologer, as a person who uses magic, as a person who uh, uses magic with art. And I am speaking out to all you other witches. <laughs> Thanks, Still Crazy. Still Crazy says I rock. You rock too. <laughs> okay, so that so these are the these are the things to keep in mind as you move forward with your artistic career, right? It's like um, unstable times does not mean poverty. It means be innovative, be open to change. Don't get stuck doing the same thing over and over again because there's so much change happening. I mean, even with your typical art, we have a uh, artificial AIs uh, creating paintings, creating drawings. Like, what is that about? Are we competing against robots? And how can we be different than an artificial intelligence creating uh, art? Like, what can we do different? Or what can we learn from that process and incorporate it into our process? So these are the things that you can keep in mind and maybe do some research and, and learn a few things while uh, this while Uranus is moving direct through Taurus. And um, also the other thing that's going to happen is, well, that has happened, is the North Node, which is um, a position of the moon, but it guides where, our, where we go to, what we aim for is also moved from Gemini to Taurus. So it moves backwards as opposed to the other planets that move forwards. But what does this mean, you may ask, Lydia? So that means that we're going to be focused on uh, conservation, on taking care of the earth, on, um, on, on beauty and art. These are ideals that are going to be coming up so that's very exciting for artists really when you think about it and the south node is what we're going to be letting go so the south node is the opposite of the north node and that's in scorpio so we're letting go of jealousy we're letting go of envy we're letting go of uh, obsession and all those negative scorpio traits and in a way, uh, by focusing on st creating some stability in times of change, it's kind of an interesting dynamic. And the two are actually going to meet uh, Uranus and Taurus and the North Node around August. So keep in mind the energies that are going on as the two start to meet together and look and see where it is on your chart. So I'm just going to bring up the chart to see what degree Uranus is in right now. So it's 10 degrees. So if you have any planets in 10 degrees right now, take a look at them. See what house they're in. See how uh, they interact with Uranus in Taurus in 10 degrees. And if you need some extra help, make an appointment with your favorite astrologer. I do astrology guidance. Uh, it is in my Linktree account or, or, or in my Facebook page, Lydia Knox Astrology. By all means, if you need some extra help around now, uh, I'm open for appointments. My, uh, my appointment uh, prices are there. And uh, yeah, that's something that you can take a look at. Uh, Shay asks, is that 9 to 11 degrees? Yeah, so it's within 5 degrees, but especially if you have something in 10 degrees, that's when it's super activated. So that's when you really need to kind of see what happens. So if you have something in 11 degrees, watch for when Uranus moves forward in one degree in a, probably a few months from now, right? And, uh, and come to terms with that. Shay says, I'm awesome doing it. I've been doing her astrology for a while now. Yes, three. I have uh, a number of clients. I've been practicing astrology for over 25 years. So back to what's going on today. Today, the moon is in Leo. So that's compassion, that's self-esteem, that's pride, that's uh, confidence. And it aspects really well with Mars in Sagittarius. It's a trine, so it's a nice smooth transition. Mars in Sagittarius gives us the high ideals, the high goals, the high hopes. And um, 
the two working together, you'll find it easier, easy to express your feelings and you'll find that you'll get a lot of energy by tuning into your feelings and practicing self-care and developing your sense of confidence. Um, the moon in conjunct, so it creates this kind of yoga position where we have to make adjustments uh, with Neptune and Pallas together in Pisces. So I haven't really talked about the Neptune Pallas conjunction. And it's kind of an interesting one because Pallas Athena is basically um, uh, leapt out of Zeus's head after he had a headache and became the goddess of wisdom. And she was like born with armor on her. So in a way, she's kind of like a, a very feminist icon when you think about it, right? You know, the woman ready to fight the wars. <laughs> and and creating headaches for men everywhere. <laughs> right? But the thing is, here's the thing, when she joins up with Neptune, uh, basically the god of dreams, the god of visions, the god of art, think of how she can become a total muse for us, right? Uh, speaking to us from the invisibles, right? Showing us how, where we can actually defend and protect ourselves and protect our ideas and follow our visions and our dreams in a more assertive manner. And the fact that it in conjuncts the moon, we may not be totally comfortable with this message. At times, uh, we might actually, you know, fall into the idea of delusion and illusion. So watch out watch your inner your inner um dialogue right and make sure that you're not knocking yourself down around this time um yeah and the big message is move past your comfort zone right now okay the moon isn't going to go void of course until tomorrow morning super early in the morning for those of you who are insomniacs or morning people like me uh, so from 3.15 to 9.02 a.m. So around that time, if you wake up with, you know, weird emotional thoughts, you know, and emotions and, and find it hard to fall asleep, understand that the, you're just in tune with the moon's energy and uh, that the moon is slowly moving into Virgo. So by the, by the time the morning rolls out, we'll find a lot more emotional clarity. We'll be able to put stuff into order and uh we'll we'll be able to tune into some emotional healing because the moon in virgo offers uh, us the opportunity to heal and uh, fix ourselves all right so magic wise i was thinking uh, for you artists out there or anyone who does any crafts uh this is a good time to go through your tools your brushes, your paints, and stuff like that. Uh, clean them up, take care of them, and then put them in a, in a magical circle. So you, you don't have to do anything special. You can light four candles around, uh, representing the four elemental quarters, air in the east, fire in the south, um, water in the west, and earth in the north and put all your paints and your brushes into that circle between those four candles, right? And then play some inspiring music, whatever causes you to dance, want to dance, and and yeah, just make them tea lights so that they're not that big, the candles, right? And, and just dance, dance in a circle, day of sil, so that's clockwise, around nine times, and uh, really feel yourself building up that energy, like, you know, really getting into the energy. And then after nine times of dancing around in a circle, listening to your favorite tune, uh, then uh, put your hands like this over your tools, whatever they are. If you're a writer, it would be a journal, your pen, you know, even your computer, doesn't matter. Um, and then just kind of send that energy out from your hands into your tools and then thank the universe and the invisibles for the extra power of the muses and uh yeah and then use those tools to create fantastic art okay so with that i think i am done uh for today 
I'll be back tomorrow with more astrology, more art, and more witchcraft. Take care, stay creative.